Well, happy Saturday, everybody. Um, I guess my uh, Queen video went over quite well, so I thought I'd do a video up of our 1913 Canadian Model T. As with the Queen, this carb also belonged to my grandfather. He bought it in 1956 from the original owner, who bought it new in Tavistock, Ontario in November of 1912. And what's kind of unusual about this Model T is it's a very, very early 1913 year model and it has a lot of 1912 parts on it. Basically, uh, you know, the, the shortest definition I can give you is uh, it's a 1912 chassis with a 1913 body on it. Now, like my Queen, it's not a show car. It's not in perfect condition. It has a lot of imperfections and it's a work in progress. Uh, there's some items on the car that I've still yet to restore cosmetically, such as the radiator and the lights. But they function the way they are, they're just, uh, they're just in need of some TLC. So let's take a closer look at the car. The car has uh, acetylene headlights and they're made by John Brown, they're Model 19s. And these were used on 1912 Model Ts, they're all brass. All the lights on this car are all brass. The later 1913 lights were brass and steel. Now, because this is a late car, it's kind of a mismatch of parts. So, some people that restore tees, they want all the lights on the car to be the same brand. Well, in this case, it's not, uh, they're not all the same brand. The uh, cowl lights are Edmonds and Jones, but they're also 1912 headlights. Oddly enough, the car has a 13 horn on it as well as the 13 body. The tail light is also a John Brown, a Model 105. I installed this rear tire carrier. This was an accessory. Fords did not come with this. And the strangest thing about the lighting system on this car is the generator. This is a Victor generator, and it only has three holes to mount it to the running boards, and this is the only generator ever made that I'm aware of that has this whole configuration. Now it was missing on the car. I found this and it's an original one, but it's the only one that fits. Now because it is a 1913 style, it makes sense. You notice that the running boards have the word Ford facing the outwards. You can't see it on this side because it's hidden by the generator. But um, these are 1912 running boards. The fenders are Canadian too. They have a double bead on them. And this was strictly a Canadian thing. The same with the back fenders. And they have a bill on the front. I should have said that when I was up front. And this was a 1912 feature and it was eliminated later in 1913. Now underneath here, we have an aftermarket accessory Prestolite tank for the gas. That's just a per compressed gas bottle to feed the headlights and it was an accessory didn't come as Ford equipment I put it on there just to fill the holes in the running board but it was with the car all these years now the way that these generators work is that the top tank here is filled with water and the bottom of the tank is filled with calcium carbide and you set the needle valve on top to so many drops per minute and then that creates the acetylene gas that goes through the red rubber hose up to the front headlights and you light the lights there's a, a little ceramic burner in there I don't know if you can see it but uh, they're quite bright when they're lit they're the equivalent to halogen now this car also has an all brass windshield later 13s had a steel windshield and what else can I tell you about it the motor is a b-series motor which was a Canadian built thing has a Holly S carburetor, the aluminum intake manifold, and uh, not much else to tell you about the engine. It's a three digit number for the serial number for the engine. It's B872, which indicates about September or October of 1912. The, uh, the 13s were a unique body style. The doors go right down to the uh, sill, and that brings up an interesting point because. If you look in the back seat here, you'll see some reinforcing brackets. This was the very first Ford recall because the body was so thin at the back that it, they would sag and the doors would fly open when you were going down the road. 
So Ford introduced those brackets and these were put in at a Ford dealership in Tavistock back in the day. Uh, this is the uh, front of the car with the three pedals. I won't go into the details about the pedals because unfortunately it's starting to rain. But uh, we have a 1912 Heinz coil box which I've showed in, in other videos and a Stewart Model 26 speedometer setup which is typical for 1912. Uh, the car still has its original upholstery in it, but the, the seat cushions have been cut, recovered. They were just too far gone, and they needed to be redone. I did put a new top on this car last summer, and uh, it's a really nice, uh, nice quality from uh, uh, Cartouche, and, uh, or Classique, I'm sorry. Uh, great kit, you put it on yourself. It took Ford about 45 seconds to put it on, it took me two weeks. But uh, there's a lot of fiddle fussing around when you have to do these things. Um, the uh, hubcaps are 1912 as well. They're, uh, they were changed in 1913 to include the uh, words made in USA. But uh, it's a good running old T. It had about 47,000 original miles on it when I acquired it. The, uh, my grandpa sold the car in 1989. And I bought it back from the owner, and he claims he only put 11 miles on it in the 34 years that he uh, he bought the car and owned it. My brothers and my cousins and I used to play in this car. It was in my grandpa's old barn, and when it left, it had a 1959 license plate on it. That was the last time that it had ran since 1989. So it sat dormant in Embro, Ontario for the better part of 30 years. Another interesting Canadian thing is the, where the license plate goes on. That bracket is a Ford Canadian bracket as well. Well, unfortunately, it's getting just a little too cold and a little too rainy to continue. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, keep safe and keep healthy. Here's our September Model T tour for the end of the summer. We're down at Port Bruce. Ontario, Canada. This is my former 1915 Model T Ford. Here we have another 15. Nice car. I think this one's about a 1925. This is my 13. It used to be my grandpa's. This is my good friend Bert Vanderwall's 14T. Here's a nice 1927 Model T Touring. And my friend Ross's 23 Speedster. Here's a beautiful 1912 Torpedo. My friend Scott's 1913 Model T. Brad Glover's 1911 Roadster. And Chris Kramer's 1928 McLaughlin Buick. Canadian Buick. 